They're coming to play Tap Manland, Hissing Quagmire, and a pretty pretty slow hand. Lots of solid interaction. Yeah, doesn't he's got a mulligan that because yeah. he doesn't do anything. He has uh, Ballista, Scoos, Two Decays, and Frasca Golgari Queen. Yeah, I mean, in the blind, you know, this is actually this is a really, really fast format. It's not quite to modern's level, but you really just can't afford to spin your tires and do nothing the first couple of turns. Those well, abrupt decays might be really powerful, but... Well, Saul's turn's going to be turn one, tap land, turn two, traverse for a second land. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's... JD, uh, JD, once again, has a one lander with uh, Sulphur Falls, which is once again tapped. Yeah, I think I see a single opt in there at the bottom. Yeah. I once again, I think you just you have to throw this back. Yeah, it's it's a little too risky, with with the deck being such a uh, a critical mass of cards that do the same thing. They're all cantrips, you know. They all discard cards. Uh, you're really just looking for any functional. Oh, amount I think of card. he's gonna. I think he's gonna keep it and put that crackling Drake to the bottom and pray. So, um, oh, oh, no, okay. So the interesting thing is here, Saul Malka, Atlanta native, uh, homeboy. Mm -hmm. He is the rock. The we refer to him as Rock King Godlord, <laughs> the or some uh, you know amalgamation of those words. He is the Rock, mm -hmm. so he plays in every format. That's his jam. Mm -hmm. He's been you doing know, this. He's, he's the creator. So uh, when you sit down versus Saw in any tournament, you know that there are going to be lands that produce black and green. Oh yeah, some form of Bayou. So JD knows what he's up against. You know his hand once again has two lands, some can't, maybe three lands. Yeah, I think I see a steam vents in the back there with a ship and reef. And he's going to put two cards down. Hit all his land drops, have a little bit of interaction with uh, the wild slashes, which are going to line up really well versus Saul's scoos. Looks like, yeah, he's kept an is it charm. Maybe he can try and get this draw panned out over the next couple of turns here. Oh, six. Saul drew, drew a three drop. Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there was a young pyromancer, I believe, off the That's top of the so land go. Yeah, it looks why like we're maybe going to make this hand a little better. I ended up with an is it So charm. why would he play the Sulphur Falls instead of the Mountain? He's going to take a damage. Uh, the oh, he's going to eat the, sh uh, the Shivan Reef, yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, well, that's a good question. I don't see a reason to do that. Yeah, it's also, if my opponent went turn one tap land, turn two, first thing he does is just fire off a Traverse, mm -hmm. I'd probably, ca I'd probably oh, counterspell it. Yeah, oh yeah. So you don't know if they've got nothing going on, but the upside, if, if, if they don't have a second land, they're not playing magic this okay. game. So he played the Pyromancer. So his, his plan is to, to Pyromancer, then Wild Slash on instep to mm -hmm. maybe kill like the Scavenging Ooze or a little bit of value and no Fatal Push in the end step from Soul. Does he have like, a Fatal Push? No, no, he doesn't. Oh. He just has these Abrupt Decays, I believe, but he did find a third land. So, so he has Scoos. Oh, he's just going to go ahead and Decay it. So I think... Mm -hmm. It's it's weird because JD only has one form of interaction, but he kind of has to pressure because he's so far behind. Mm -hmm. But next turn, Saul's is it's going to be excellent because he has drew a murder Rider last turn. Mm -hmm. So he has a murder Rider, a decay, Frasca Golgari Queen, Walking Ballista, Tireless Tracker, and Scavenging Goose. So mm -hmm. his hands. Golden, and he's really not under a lot of pressure here. We might see him no. get to a point where he just gets to keep the board in check another couple turns, and then deploy a tireless tracker the same turn. He can play a oh, land man. and just see him start to slowly, you know, just grind away from. JD so he drew a fatal push, which is excellent. Oh wow! So now his turn is probably play Scoos and and eat the pyromancer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to get hit with that. Is it charm? Oh, he can't eat the pyromancer. He doesn't have a green land. land. Yeah. Well, this is probably going to be the only opportunity if there is not another removal spell coming here from JD uh, Just to, kill to deal with this scavenging ooze. You don't want to use this is it charm like this, but I don't think you're beating this card if it ever gets outside of the range. Yeah, and he right. decides the same thing. Yeah, he Has takes to go. the damage. They're not. Uh, so JD should be at 19. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He didn't shock with that steam vents, but he hasn't yeah. used it once. Shiv and Reef. And then, yeah. uh, the cool thing is he can, he can use his spells a little bit liberally because he does have the. Treasure Cruise in hand. This is true, yeah. And he drew another Is it Charm, which is excellent. Treasure Cruise is a very powerful magic oh, card. There's seen the uh, so Liliana Last Hope. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. that's, that's that's a good one. That plays. And, oh, yep, here we go. See the counter so non creature spell. Five. Unless the controller pays so two next, mode. So next turn, he can. Uh, well, another removal spell. Awesome. He, so he can just go ahead and cruise and hold up the removal spell. Cruise is eight. Uh, yes, yep, that is correct. He can do that. 
which is excellent for the for whatever removal spell mm-hmm. or whatever creature Saul decides to play. Yeah, I think you have to go ahead and just mm-hmm. cruise. I'm going to leave one up here. I'm going to take a look at three new ones. Land. Lightning axe. Land. land. Oh, not very kind. He's going to have this board under control, but he's not putting too much pressure into play. I don't think I want to be on the back foot in a long game against Soul playing the rock. Yeah. I mean, the cool thing is, like, at some point, JD has to stop playing lands. When he draws his loot spells, being able to pitch extra lands is really important. Exactly. So, similar to holding your lands and legacy for your brainstorms, because they're pseudo drawing cards. Yeah. Yeah, the life total is getting updated. The players are handling it on the table as well, and we're watching so. Uh, it may be a little slow to update as we work through the bugs first thing this morning. So Saul's going to go ahead and get his uh, Field of Ruin going and then play a Traverse to go get another land. So that'll put him up to four, four for yep. next turn. And that's all he really needed with this hand. He has uh, everything he could ask for as far as removal spells, threats to deploy over the next couple of turns. He just needed to make sure he got to this point uh, without too much pressure you know, in a reasonable amount of time. So... Uh, it looks like he's probably just going to get uh, the other tap land put into play. So that t- next turn he can play a Ballista for two or play the Golgari Queen. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he draws a land, that'd be really good because he can play his uh, his Tireless Tracker and draw a card. Yeah. But JD's hand is full of removal. Gosh, yeah, this does not line up well, especially against this Baraska. This Wild Slash is not going to be able to finish it up if he goes, uh, if he brings the uh, Baraska down and ticks it up. Uh, just... Doesn't look like a good place to be in. Saul's going to be drawing two cards a turn, possibly, from here on out. Another tracker. Uh, I would probably play the Ballista here. like Saul. Yeah. Just ping it, get on board. Mm-hmm. you got to expect that if your opponent hasn't been doing anything, that they either have nothing but lands or reactive spells. So you got to say, what would I rather actually have stick around in this instance if I'm going to force his hand? And so Saul's saying, I would rather have these Tyros trackers. They draw more cards. The incidental damage from walking Ballista is not going to be enough. Yeah. Uh, well, that's an exceptional draw. Although. All right. Arclight Phoenix comes in. I'm sure that's yep, that is the pitch. You can... I think we're going to see Lightning Axe pitch, pitch land and then Wild Slash the face. We have to pitch the axe because he only discarded one card. Um, right, because no, he didn't attack. Oh, no, you're yeah, right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, pitch, yeah. See. I'm, I'm, I'm a dumb. No, no, no. There's a lot going on here at some points. So now he's going to just go ahead and Wild Slash the face, go to drop him to 11, and then Phoenix him down to 8. Uh, comes our that judges for the day are uh, Scarlet. Yeah, we have she's, Scarlet. She's a here. single judge handling the. It's only a twenty-four per, or twenty-six person event, mm-hmm. so we also have our staff on hand uh, if she needs any help. There's another she, land off the top here for Saul. Uh, so I think Saul should go ahead and play the tracker, play the land, and get the clue. He wants to save that clue for next turn. So if he wants to, he can crack the clue and then fatal push the phoenix. Yeah. Oh, do you, he doesn't have the man. Oh, yeah. yeah for next, next turn, next he does. Turn. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, but he's getting uh, a little bit low on life. At a, at a certain point here, you got to be worried you're going to get burned out here. We've only seen, uh, what is that, two wild slashes so far. You never know when one of these Phoenix decks could flip another Phoenix or two out of nowhere, have another burn spell, and, you know, suddenly half your life total is gone. Yes. We're already there. So. so if I was JD, I, I probably wouldn't play any of these spells. There's no reason to. Mm-hmm. Your life's not pressure. You want to be able to return a Phoenix whenever. There's no reason to cast any of these spells. Yeah, I agree. The <sighs> Yeah, there's... I, mean, I, I, could, I could maybe see going ahead and firing off this Lightning Axe at full at full mana cost just to get this uh, tireless tracker out of play because, yeah. you know, again, when you're when you're not finding much yourself, you can't let your opponent draw two cards every single turn. He doesn't know that there's another tireless tracker, unfortunately, but... So yeah, he's doing here. your line. Go ahead and just kill the tracker. Uh, well, this is good because now he gets to use the fatal push on the, the phoenix. Mm-hmm. I think 
he is going to fire that off here. Yeah. So uh, now JD needs two more spells to, yeah. to, to go ahead and crank it up. Strategic planning being a good one to start. Let's see three more cards, but uh, he's oh. going to need a couple runners in a row here. Another fatal push. Yeah. Saul's hand is excellent. Mm -hmm. He just has to get through the game. So I don't... Uh, not sure I can pull up the deck list. Let's see how many scavenging uses Saul actually has in his deck. Mm -hmm. Looks like I think Saul was digging for another land there and missed. Yeah. He kind of thought sees off the top. Don't know how much of that one's going to play now being so low. Oh, a young Pyromancer. That draw. is uh, that is wonderful. We're going to see JD get some good value out of this right off the bat. Even if he doesn't get this Phoenix back, maybe he finds another spell here and at least just gets to put some bodies into play. Wow. The Brazen Borrower is, is, once again, excellent. Yeah. Because it's a threat, and it's a bounce spell to, to buy time. Mm -hmm. It also has uh, evasion. Flying is very powerful in magic. Yes, it is. Uh, and missing that land, Soul's Hand, notably a little bit clunky. If he fails to hit the sixth land next turn, he's unable to play Vraska and keep an Abrupt Decay up. So he has to make the decision... Do we go ahead and jam if we don't find it and leave ourselves susceptible to something like that raising borrower? Uh, or are we going to hang back, play it slow, and say, you know, uh, just just got to stay alive? I don't know if you can do that right now. Okay, and he found a land, but it's tapped, so he is just going to play it slow, it looks like. He's got a... So GD has a, you know, a two-turn clock as it is. Mm -hmm. Saw so as a decay, go ahead and just kill the Pyromancer. So Brazen Bar does not allow you to bounce your own permanence. No, I, it does not. So he can go. we can go ahead and see him use the Brazen Bar, bounce the Tireless Tracker, get another token, mm -hmm. and then uh, next turn attack for two, put him to four, and then the Brazen Bar plus any token gets through. Yep. And Sol actually using this Abrupt Decay now might come back to hurt him, seeing as this Brazen Borrower is going to be able to evade any sorcery speed removal. Um, you know, it's potential that this just gets there. Uh, oh, well, no, sorry, I'm sorry. Sol drew another, Sol drew another Fatal Push with the clue. So as long as he keeps up the mana to crack the clue, he's safe from the Brazen Borrower. Yeah. So Sol actually, Sol's deck list is super interesting. Mm -hmm. He has Seder Wayfinder in his deck. Wow. To enable Scrap Heap Scroungers. Um, Tassigers and obviously the Traverse Package. Mm -hmm. He has some really sick cards he could hit here, such as uh, Massacre Girl. That'd be really wow. excellent. Uh, you know, even a Questing Beast. Tireless Tracker, was. we've already gone through both of those. Mm -hmm. uh, Rain Map Excavator start, you know, strip mining him. And he also has another Scoos he could hit. Yeah, we're at a point where that second Scoos comes down and that might be it. That'd be, and he also, do note, his mana base is two Field of Runes and one Blast Zone for Colorless Sources. So he did decide to play the EE -E land. Ah, that's, uh, wow, that's an excellent top. draw for JD, his Treasure Grooves. Yep. So this could just be it for Saul here. Yeah, those were three very live cards currently. Yep, that's it then. Because he gets to yep. kill that, attack for, shoot him for... Put him to four. Phoenix comes back. Yep. Game. And that is going to do it here for our first game. Yep. So uh, if you guys are having any issues uh, with volume, we're going to go ahead and crank it up. Uh, if you guys can't hear us, let us know. The only way we know is if you guys tell us. We're generally pretty loud people, so maybe we're uh, overcompensating now. But I can get loud. <laughs> I just don't want to be loud in your house while you're uh, watching our stream on your couch. Exactly. I'd, yeah. So, sideboards. For Saul, we have one Plague Crafter, two Kalidas, a Shifting Ceratops, a Damping Sphere, two Ashiok, two Assassin's Trophy, Golgari Charm, two Unmored Ego, two Duress, and one Collector Brutality. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ashiok's insane here, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's your only hard graveyard hate source. Kalidus does provide some help, but... Kalidus uh, is, is... I've I've played this matchup quite a bit on Moto mm -hmm. from the playing Phoenix. Yeah. Uh, playing against Kalidus is super hard. Yeah. Uh, you Only four of your... If you play four axes, those are the only removal spells that matter. You know? Uh, and generally, the games go long enough that Kalidus just comes down and can get big enough because you, you kill something... Mm -hmm. And then you make it larger. Yeah, you can't get underneath it. Uh, I 
I kind of like the Gogar drum scene that we've seen Pyromancer. Yep, exactly. Good catch all. Let's see here. And I think that's it. Maybe Brutality is it's a removal spell, eats yeah. a treasure cruise. Being as a. Uh, with the game being so close uh, with the burn spells, I could see Collective Brutality coming in just as a way to pad your life total ever so slightly. You know, he has those Thoughts Ease his main deck. Maybe he doesn't want those. Um, could be an easy cut. Yeah, that seems reasonable. So JD's sideboard is a Sahili Sublime Artificer, Ashiok Dream Render, Chandra Acolyte of Flame, three Negate, two Mystical Dispute, two Magma Spray, two Fry, and two Mizium Mortars. Mm, okay. So I think the Mortars come in easy. Mm-hmm. It's an easy cleanup. You know he's bringing in Kalidus. Um, Magma Spray possible. It answers the majority of the small creatures. Um, I don't know, actually. So we saw Murderous Rider that game. I guess, yeah, Scavenging Ooze. Scooze, we Tracker. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I, if you need the extra removal. Yeah. But you definitely bring in the Sahili yes. and the Ashiok. Oh, yeah. The Sahili is another young pyromancer, which is hard to interact with from Saul's side. Uh, in GD's side. JD didn't know Saul has a million of Rebdicates. Exactly. Exactly. You know? This is a game of resources we have here between, you know, the Phoenix deck, which is able to just consistently churn through its deck, uh, get back its uh, recursive threats in the form of the Phoenixes. Uh, and then uh, Soul Maka's deck is just, you know, it's it's pile of good cards. It's all valuable, green, black, draw cards and such. Uh, so this is going to come down to who can either uh, make the other person stumble on resources or who can actually just grind the other person out. So it's... Uh from from Saul's side, the the biggest card for you need to be able to beat is Treasure Cruise. Mm-hmm. If you just get to spend one mana, draw three cards in uh, this resource game, yeah, JD's up. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem is with uh, with JD side is the Mulligan from that first game. You saw how easily that Treasure Cruise brought him in, mm-hmm. brought him back, found him another Treasure Cruise. He was down to five cards, mm-hmm. multi five, multi five, and. So, you know, stumbled, might not have kept, should have kept that in, mm-hmm. but Treasure Cruise is so powerful. Yeah. Uh, if Saul can land a Ashiok and protect, and that, that includes not ticking down. Exactly. So, a uh, popular thing from when people were playing like the Field of Dead Mirrors or whatever in Standard, mm-hmm. you play your Ashiok and you just never ticked it down because you want to keep it as long as live as possible because the longer the game goes, they're going to draw their field eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, you just want to kind of protect it. Yeah. And that makes sense here. You know, maybe you're actually not super concerned with getting rid of the uh, Arclight Phoenixes uh, when they show up, but you just want to make sure that JD can't treasure cruise, you know, two, three times in a game and just, you know, completely bury you in card advantage. Yeah. Um, so we are, uh, you should see on your screen, we are uh, attempting to use Cardboard Live for the first time. Mm-hmm. It's a real cool program. Uh, a lot of bigger streams are using it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it should be on your left and right where the player's body would be. You would see a little ad thing. You yep. click it, and that should pop open the deck list. If you can't see it, let us know. This is our first time using it. Indeed. So it's entirely possible that uh, we're dumb. Yeah, th- uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I would not bet against me being a smart person. Yeah, so... Let's see. Saul's hand is a... Uh, Couple lands, traverse. One's a fable passage. He might have a decay, maybe. JD's hand is rough. We've got two mountains as our only lands here. Uh, looks like the one strategic planning, which we can't cast. Yeah, this just has to go back. Single blue man, a single blue land may have changed that up there because we did have young pyromancer, arc light phoenix. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a lot of the things we were looking for. Just you know, we want to make sure we can actually play a magic. And again, with a deck that's just nothing but cantrips and the cards you want, the deck is consistent enough to take these mulligans, go down, find the cards you need. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so, what do you think about the the London mulligan? Oh, the London mulligan, man, I. I really love it. You know, when it first first got spoiled, I was a little bit worried as far as uh, the older formats were concerned uh, because there's some really powerful stuff going on, obviously. And, you know, uh, you give the already very powerful decks an extra bit of consistency, and maybe it's too much. Uh, but I really like what it does for actually removing these non-games of magic. So JD is going to five again, again. here. Yeah. And he won that game. Exactly, yeah. He's in no stretch out of this. This feels bad. You know, a lot of us have been here, you know, sympathize with JD, but... He can still very much so do this, getting to C7 every single time and then put a card back for every time that you've seen a fresh oh, 7. There you go. 
So he just drew he has three lands, spells in his hand, yeah. some 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 ability to recoup. So that's excellent. So mm-hmm. once again, that's uh helps quite a bit on mulliganing. Yes. So you know, we're gonna have three rounds of modern later. Mm-hmm. And uh you and Abigail, Abby, are mm-hmm. going to be doing the commentary. Uh, I think that the you were correct on the older formats getting kind of hosed a little bit by this rule, mm-hmm. but we can chat about that later. Yes. Here we go. Saul starts off with uh, the fabled passage, mm-hmm. uh, which is one of my favorite includes from Throne of Eldraine. Yeah, uh, it's a fetch land. Mm-hmm. We don't get those in this, but form. we don't have all of them, so mm-hmm. you can only ever have four. Mm-hmm. So we don't have to deal with shuffling all the time. Exactly. It's very nice. Great for coverage. Nobody wants yeah. to sit around and watch you shuffle your cards. That's why they banned Nexus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That was it. Oh, so Saul drew a Scooze. He's just going to go ahead and run it out. It's going to mm-hmm. go ahead and get a, eat a... Oh, it wow, doesn't nope. have a Wild Slash. Nothing right now. Uh, but it has to eat this... Uh, JD has a lot going on, too. He has two strategic plantings, I believe, in Is It Charm, and he has... Is that the Chandra some? Acolyte of Flame. Yeah. See if we can get the get that one pulled up. Uh, Chandra Acolyte of Flame. It's a one RR Planeswalker from uh, M20. Mm-hmm. So he's uh, playing the... Now, so has this... Uh, so a Wayfinder, which is only enabling his uh, Traverse and also finding lands. Mm-hmm. So Chandra uh, seems pretty sweet. It just makes two dudes. Yep. And it also is a uh, Snapcaster Mage. Oh, in yeah. In quotation marks. <laughs> uh, which is once... it's a it, it, This matchup, like you said, is all about resource management and being able to play long. Mm-hmm. These very cheap three-mana Planeswalkers, which were not design mistakes in any way, mm-hmm. help a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, it's rough because uh, Sol doesn't want to take all of his removal out, but, uh, you know, I don't know how he feels about keeping cards like Fatal Push and such in post-board uh, against the deck where most cards are recursive. So if he's, you know, cutting down on uh, some of his, you know, removal spells, the ones that can actually go for uh, Chandra, then this might actually just be able to stick around here for a little while. He's going to make two tokens, and he's just going to pump them for two. Mm-hmm. Oh, did uh, he take up? He took up and put a uh, a loady counter on each. Oh no, he it did. starts at four. It does. Wow. Yeah, three mana walkers, walkers starts are powerful. At four. Wow. Uh, so he has a elemental token and a uh, looks like a soccer player. Mm-hmm. We do have tokens. Soccer player is that? I don't know. We do have so- we do have tokens. Uh, we don't have table spotter. No, we do not. So we're going to do our best. The players are going to try their best to uh, use the correct tokens mm-hmm. to make it easier on us. But the token disappeared at the end of turn, so this one isn't <laughs> that big a problem. So Saul has two Traverse to Umvalds, a Forest, a Fable Passage, uh, and I can't quite read the other cards. He does not have, he has a land, instant sorcery creature. So he does have a, he does have Traverse, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, does it, No, he only has three, right? Instant land creature. What is the one mana green? Is that another, that's another oh, Traverse, that tra- right? Oh, yes, and you're correct. Yep. Yeah, so yeah he and he's counting it out now. He's showing. So cardboard live should be up now. We're gonna see, hopefully. Cross our fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Do a so, little technical wizardry on the side. This is pretty sick because he gets to he gets to traverse for mm-hmm. a uh, hero's downfall. Basically. Yeah. These uh these adventure cards are really really cool card design because there's you know there's a lot of cards that have allowed us to search up uh, other effects uh, other types of cards uh, that normally don't give us access to this so, you know traverse the Olven Wald is... normally not finding a removal smell but here it does finds a removal spell strapped to a creature. These adventure spells I I really do like the way that they're they're designed. Mm-hmm. None of them feel overpowered. None of them feel oppressive mm-hmm. like some other cards from the set. Yeah yeah, which are not legal in this. Blessed Thank- format. Thankfully, no. We might see some of them later. Uh, I if know. I have any power on that, we're not watching any Okos. <laughs> but I think everybody has Okos. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I think it's a fair bet, unfortunately, that there's a lot of players in our modern field that have decided to register Oko. Play the smart cards? Yep. Yeah. Oh, so he's, he's oh. playing the uh, the secondary cost on Archon <laughs> Phoenix, which is 3R32 three three Haste. It, the card actually does have a mana cost in the top right corner. I know we always just bra- uh, blaze past that, but... It is there. You can cast it. Solomon Malka drew a had an island. island. Well, then. Uh, huh. I didn't see that in the deck. No, no, no. Time. We pull that, pull that back up for a moment. Wow, that's interesting. I wonder what the island's there for. 
Because he did have the Ashok in the sideboard, but you don't need the blue for that. They're, they're split pips, so you can just cast it on black. He is from the 90s. He may not know that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Soul Maka uh, confirmed older than every magic card currently on the he is table. A f- he is a 4 DCI. He has 4 DCI. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Digits in his number, which is awesome. One of our computers actually struggles to find him when we try to register yeah. him in a word for events. Oh, he has unmoored ego. We're oh uh, yeah, look at excellent. Me and, so me and John are your typical magic players. We can't read. Um, choose not to. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, we say that, but we can't. Yeah, very... uh, but that's uh that's a uh, that's interesting because he has the unmoored ego. That mm-hmm. has to be for the ramp decks, right? Yeah, you got to think. Is what well, I mean without. Gosh. Be, like, Wait, I would think that'd be for something like uh, Field of the Dead, right? Right, but there's no more Field of the that Dead. So, so gosh, yeah, what could it be? Because, you know, there's there's not too many things that these green-black good stuff uh, decks can't handle. Well, remember, Island's the best land. So if you add an Island, your deck's automatically That's better. true. So uh, Annie Dropper in our chat oh, says wow. Painful Truth and Cyborg. That's a good yeah, option. Look at that. Get that might be in there. In there. Uh, I love Painful Truths. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going to Tassiger. Oh, so a 4-5 is pretty hard yeah. for this deck to, to beat, needs unless to be, it has Lightning Axe. As, yep, it needs to be Lightning Axe. I don't think anything else does it by itself. You don't want to throw two cards uh, in this Oh, yeah, no. So Saul still has a Traverse in hand and uh, a land, and I couldn't tell the third card. Maybe it's a removal spell? Mm-hmm. But the Traverse, so I assume that Traverse is going to find, like, a, a Scavenging Ooze once yeah. that... Uh, Phoenix goes to the yard, and then, you know, mm-hmm. then he's getting beat on two fronts. He's, the yard's going away, and Tasker's a 4-5. Yep, exactly. Just cement your position ahead. Make sure that JD can't actually do anything to come back. Saw's gonna, Saw has a Assassin's Trophy. Oh, okay, yeah. that's the removal spell. Not bad, and JD, JD will get to the search the here for a basic land untapped. So, yeah, Saw's looking pretty good this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but once again, like it just takes one treasure cruise, and you're uh, you're behind, way way behind. That's very true. You know, uh, the one thing that this green black deck doesn't have is uh, draw three for one mana, and that's real powerful. <laughs> See, was it a land and opt off this chart? So he doesn't have to discard because he went to attacks and he got to attack. Correct. So this is just a draw two. Pretty good. Oh, we got another one. Okay, so stock up wild slash another, another phoenix. phoenix. <laughs> so Saul probably should have stopped him within the attack step mm-hmm. after you know after you move out of the first main phase before you declare attackers get it but you know that's a little misstep that is easy to make mm-hmm. especially if you know you don't no one ever thinks of charter courses two mana draw to it's always a discard exactly We're Saul's coming five in for here. five putting him down to eight I think if I'm Saul here, I'm just content to, you know, sit back and... Do you, tra- you traverse oh, for Oh, he has the traverse. Oh, then, yeah. Then you get to hit the... Well, he just passed the Scoos, actually, there at the front of his deck. So what could he be going for? Ashiok? No, he can't get Ashiok. That's wrong. That's dumb. Uh, that's not how that He's works, getting unfortunately. Oh, okay, so he didn't like the Scoos at the front of his deck. They had another one back there. Yeah, he had to get the, the M- M17 yeah. one. The, the stamp is the authenticator. It, it, it's all about which copy of the card you get. Uh... So it needs to play Skews. Go ahead and eat the Phoenix. Mm-hmm. So now JD's one removal spell doesn't kill it. Nope. Yeah, there's no deal threes in the deck. They are all two or five. Uh, well, he probably has Mizzy Mortars in now. Oh, yeah, sorry. So, so Mizzy Mortars coming from the sideboard. You're right. So there is still an opportunity. But Only Prime Master, that's an excellent draw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mizzy Mortars is powerhouse in RTR standard. Because mm. uh, RTR plus Theris, you had the Red Devotion decks. Yeah. And you had Boros Reckoner and... You played a bunch of dudes and then wiped the board and killed them. Nykthos, uh, Shrine Nyx was really good at uh, powering out these expensive seeming cards. Man. So it looks like he's probably going to play the Pyromancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, ramp through some spells real quick. I believe this will get Fatal Pushed. Trigger on the stack. Yep. Here it comes. Wow. I had everything. Yeah. So he should probably just go ahead and crack that opt off. Yeah. Get the uh, get the one token. Mm-hmm. And I don't Maybe, think I want to fire off the wild slash. Personally. I don't fire the wild slash. No. I think you, I, I think you go ahead and just take the draw from the, the, uh, 
or the look from the, the strategic planning because mm-hmm. you don't want to spend the spell if you don't have to. Exactly. It might be more important here to get this Phoenix back at a later point in time if there's no green mana available for Saul. Yeah, well, there's no Phoenix in the yard, right? Right, but he has one in his hand, so maybe uh, he So he's just going to crack that other opt off, oh, okay, try so to maximize yeah. the, the board presence, and maybe he does hit a Phoenix off of the, the planning. Oh, well, there's your five. Yep. Fiver. So that guy's gone. Planning resolves. He gets the token. Mm-hmm. Stopping thinking. Football players. <laughs> Six soccer tokens. You need to resolve the strategic planning now. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yikes. Excellent. You know, it feels good to get those out of the way, but uh, that might be a stretch. Oh, he gets to play nothing. the land, too. Yeah. So he can actually kill the Tassiger. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, and I he think can I... discard the Phoenix. Discard Phoenix, kill Tasker. Oh, the Lightning Axe, bang right. Three. This is actually looking much better now, because then the Phoenix is back when the Scavenging Ooze... Uh, oh, no, the Scavenging Ooze can still eat it. With yeah, the so now. that's what he has to decide. Is, yeah. But does he ever get it? Like, mm-hmm. You don't get an opportunity. Right. I think you just... Uh, Unfortunately, you kind of have to also kill the the scoos. Well, unfortunately, yeah, you can't kill the scoos with the lightning axe if you pitch the phoenix because it's part of the cost. So the phoenix will be in the graveyard with the lightning axe on the stack, and the scoos then it goes just, to a four. It still yeah. dies. Yeah, it still dies, but then you don't get the phoenix. Yeah, he's actually going to discard the wild slash. Okay, yeah, to kill that to get out of the way, and he's going to eat the pyromancer. Mm-hmm. So Saul's going to go up to fifteen. JD saying these three one ones are going to get in front of this tasker just long enough for me to. So next turn he's just going to play the the bird and, and fly. Yeah. A do a duress, not a very good one. And JD is you know uh, like twenty or so cards through his deck. We haven't seen a treasure cruise yet, so you know these top decks very live for him. So he's going to ask, activate tasker. Oh, sick! I got another duress back. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that one's doing all that oh, here. Yeah, there's two dresses, man. Cast it. Yep, look at that. Got a bird. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Tasker. I'd rather just play the Murderous Rider. Mm-hmm. Personally, and then get more threats on the board. Murderous Rider it, is start, pretty good at racing the Phoenix because he's at eight. Exactly, padding your life total. Just everything you want to be doing right now. But you know, Saul's uh, much better at this game than I am. So yeah, exactly. I- I'll default to him. There's a reason he's in the feature match, and we're uh, sitting in the back D&D room commentating. Yes, this is true. And they say those that do, do, and those that can't, teach. It's true. Or kind of those thing. who can't do, don't do. The, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, just don't do. So he drew a young pyro, and he's going to play his phoenix, and he's going to go ahead and just start clocking them. Yep. And Soul with only one card in hand here, uh, and this, you know, this duress in the graveyard making Tasker's activation a little bit awkward. You know, all he has to do is draw a brick, you know, maybe once or twice here, and JD actually has an avenue to just barely squeak through this one. Yeah. Let's see. So he's, oh, he's got the... um... Nissa, that's the flip Nissa from Origins. Oh, it's going to yeah. become a Planeswalker. Oh, yeah. Planeswalkers are powerful. <laughs> three mana. Three mana Planeswalker. It's a theme I think we're going to see so throughout the day gonna today. So going to be a trigger, and he's going to flip his Nissa mm-hmm. uh, Sage Animist, I think it believe, yep. turns into. Is he going to make a 4-4 four, four here? He think? could make a 4-4. Four, four. That'd be sweet. Um, I am still a fan of just playing my Murder's Rider. Yeah. We'll Leave go and bring up Nissa Sage Animist. Yeah. For the for the for the chat at home, I believe the I believe the plus is something about revealing the top of your library for creature a land, or, or land. A creature land. The this is the front side, yep. so it's like a wood elf, but this is the back side. There you go. Yeah, so land it goes into play. Otherwise, put it into your hand. Okay, or mm-hmm. make a four four legendary creature. Mm-hmm. Saw. So, oh, there we go. Yep. And he just says, make "We're a- racing. I have eight power. You're at eight. Put you under the abyss." Oh, sweet. We have uh, Chris Boozer oh, uh, t- letting us know that the Cardboard Live app is working and that we are also in round 51. Yes, in fact. Uh, these players very tired after uh, 72 straight hours we were battling 51. it out here. We actually just switched back to round one. Ah, excellent. Okay. Much more reasonable. 
This is why chat's awesome. We're not we're not sub only here. Exactly. A because they won't give us any money. Uh, yeah, no. B I, because I they're very helpful. Money. So he went in and played the the murder shard like uh, we thought. Uh, he has a lot of power on the board. And JD, what did he draw? Did you see what he drew? I did not. It needs to be a spell. Yes. Uh, preferably treasure cruise. <laughs> I I don't think it was the way that we're tanking over this one. We're doing some math here. It's just actual treasure cruise. Oh, You're just thinking. <laughs> mm, what so would I like to draw? I, yeah. It's a land. Hmm. It's another oh, phoenix. Another phoenix. Wow. Okay. So that's a two-turn clock in the air. Yeah, well, this um, this murderous rider getting to crash across the next turn, gaining yeah. a guaranteed two. Okay, so he's not attacking. Yeah. He's, oh. mm -hmm. he's being uh, smart. To another land. He's going to reveal the top card. It's not a land. It goes to his hand. That's a pretty good one. That's uh, very good. Uh, so he can kill the Pyromancer. Mm -hmm. uh, fours get blocked. He activates the man land. Uh, so this will be four coming across here? Four coming across, yeah. yeah. He has to block one of the fours. Maybe he blocks the murderous rider and a four here and hopes to just hit runner runner, but that seems like a so a treasure cruise of... into more spells. Gosh, yeah, that's be, what like, he has to draw. Cruise into chart of course, finding you know Phoenix. Yeah. yeah, it's a stretch. It's not impossible, but so it takes six, go to two. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Saul gains two, goes to fourteen. Yeah, this is not looking good for uh, JD here. Uh, the only thing you can draw really is treasure cruise, and uh, mm -hmm. that does not look like a treasure cruise to me. Well, I mean, he can draw any cantrip to find the treasure cruise. Oh wow, it was treasure cruise wow. off the top. Big brain. That is, uh, you know, better lucky than good, and these players are good. Yeah, uh, getting lucky helps. Wow, goodness, the great. best card. Phoenix. Oh wow, phoenix lightning. Okay, so wow, that doesn't two spells. do it. He could lightning axe and pitch the phoenix. So he but can, that... yeah, he's can uh, he can play a play the phoenix as a blocker. Um. Block a four, axe the other one, take two, die. Yeah. So there's gosh. no there's no way out for JD. He no drew it. the best card he could possibly draw. It, it was draw. very, very close, exactly. Drew three cards. One of them was blank, and unfortunately, it's not going to do it for him. Yeah. That was I real close, though. That was excellent. Yeah. Oh, th those were wonderful games there, actually. So we have another one coming. Yeah. So... JD's mulliganed a lot. Mm -hmm. And each of these games has been really close. Exactly. So people, you know, Modern used to be, Phoenix used to be the best deck in Modern by a pretty wide margin. Mm -hmm. You know, all the all the pros and, and grinders were, you know, talking how good it was. So when it came to Pioneer, you know, we we talked, I've tested it, Kyle, one of our friends tested it, and wasn't too impressed. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have Young Pyromancer. I was playing the actual thing in the ice. That's true. Young Pyromancer adds another layer of... Uh, of the grindiness <laughs> and the ability to go wide, right. which a lot of decks in the format can't handle go wide. Mm -hmm. You know, if you play Pyromancer and get three or four tokens, they have to spend, like the blue white deck has to spend a sweeper, and mm -hmm. then you can, you know, recur your threats and, and get ahead of them. Exactly. Again, any deck trying to do something resembling this green uh, black deck and trying to one for one your way, you're just never going to get through the young Pyromancer. Yeah, so while they're shuffling, we're going to go ahead and talk about some of our events we run here at Win Condition Games. Uh, we're going to go and bring up a slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to talk about Gundam models. Yeah. So we actually have a, a really wide selection of Gundam models. Mm. They look pretty sick. Yeah. We have people come in and paint them. So win condition, we, we don't just do magic. No, we're We off. do all the trading card games. We even do Dragon Ball, Bushy Road products. We also do everything else nerd. We have <laughs> plushies, Pokemon, Gundams. Yeah. Pops. We do everything. So, you know... You may be into magic, but maybe your friend, significant other, doesn't really like magic. Bring them in. We guarantee we can get them into something they like. Mm -hmm. And if not, we'll convert them to play magic. We, we got something for everyone Everybody. with a touch of nerd in them here. We also buy cards. Yes, definitely. Uh, Any cards. I've, I think we have probably one of the best buy lists in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We pay really well on uh, all of our main games, which you'll see at the bottom. Pokemon, mm -hmm. Weiss, MTG, and Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, I personally sell all my cards here, obviously, because I buy my own cards. It works really well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have my friends come in, specifically who play at other stores, to sell us cards. Because we do step up and pay 
uh, I believe, a, a fair market value. Mm-hmm. A little bit above on my stuff. It looks like we're actually back here real quick into game three. No, no turn two Pyromancer. Yeah, no mulligans for either player. Turn two Pyromancer. So Saul is going to... He has a duress and push, but he can't do both. No. You have to push it. Yeah. He's got a value not getting too far behind on the board. JD's hand looks pretty good. Yeah. He's found a third land. So this was my problem. So when I played, this was my problem with the uh, the strategic planning mm-hmm. version was you didn't have enough ones. Right. Yeah. It's such a critical critical mass of two drops in the deck. And, you know, you have your wild slashes, your shocks, your ops, Oof. but those are That's an the one drops. Draw. And yeah. Right on time coming in to eat up that Arc Light Phoenix before it comes back. JD did find another young Pyromancer here, I believe. So, Pyromancer into uh, Mizium Orders to kill the Skews. Yeah, get this out of here. That's, that's really good. Uh, so I, the version I played was uh, the Merfolk Secret Keeper version because I wanted more ones. I also played five, six Delve spells, so four cruises, two digs. Okay. Because my treasure or my, my Secret Keepers kept putting cards in the grave. Mm-hmm. So we're going to probably see a Thoughtseize first. Oh, wow, okay. Yep, those two cards do functionally the same thing. They put one card in your hand and uh, well, another, well, another, another one or two in your graveyard. Yeah, so sh- I think Saul also has... So he's going to go ahead and push the Pyromancer. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have another land because he does have a Duress, which would be excellent here. Mm-hmm. I think he has the Unmoored Ego in his hand. So maybe he's trying to just set up a moment where he has Ooh. the land to clear the way with the Duress and then Unmoored Ego, you know... Name Phoenix, just go ahead and get the stickiest threat out of the deck, yeah. and you think you can deal with a bunch of 1 1 tokens at that point. And library for four cards with, a, with that name and exile them. That was not a land off. But the it, was a, it was a uh, Seder Wayfinder, which will mm-hmm. probably find a land. Yep. It also checks the, you know, checks the other. Oh, uh, yeah. Get to trade with the. Oh, no, we're just going to fire this duress off. So valuing the information here, because he knew. The only the only card he knew in his opponent's hand was the strategic planning that got fired off. I, so I think JD, whatever he does, it's going to get eaten. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like looting with the the is it charm. It's yeah, you just you, let it happen. You, just mm-hmm. just let him eat it. You you see two extra cards and then wind up with no cards in hand at the end of the day. I think Saul's just going to go and play the mm-hmm. the Seder Wayfinder. Find a, that there's another land. Excellent. Collect so I, he that. did bring the brutality yeah. in. Take the favorite passage, go ahead and play it. Go get a black source, probably. Mm-hmm. Oh, you might get the blue. So for oh, uh, true. Well, is painful truth coming in here as much as do we you want to be able to truth in the board? No, it was blue for the un un. Oh, the un- ego. Ego. I'm sorry. I don't know if he has painful truth. I don't remember. He was uh, that was just a right, comment. Right. Like uh, oh, we're gonna see a tasker here. A friendly. Chatter yes. from Twitch. Oh, he's had the Tassiger. Wow. Yeah. Uh, way better than playing your blue spell. <laughs> Play a 4-5. <four>, <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be real specific here once he delves away. He doesn't want to get in another situation like last game where the duress is just yeah. going to constantly get So all the cards... Him. All the cards in the graveyard right now that are, you know, the Tassiger could get back mm-hmm. are exceptional. It's a... Uh, brutality, mm-hmm. or is that a murder rider? Uh, that's a, br- uh, a murder rider. That is a murder rider. Yep, murderous rider. Rider, a fatal push, fatal push, and a traverse another traverse. Wall. Yeah, I'm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good card. Yes, very that's good. That's a crackling Drake. The uh, can't tripping X four in the air. That guy is going to be huge. Uh, that guy's going to be massive. Mm-hmm. May this, may want to see. Oh, uh, so the cool thing is, Saul here does have the okay the trophy, mm-hmm. and that's good because without that, he was he might die. A world of hurt. Yeah, I was He's, probably close to like a six four or something. Oh, or gosh, eight, four. I, I can't More. see from here, but yeah, I, I think it ends up just being a turn two clock pretty cleanly. Yeah. So Saul still has the uh, unmoored ego in his hand. Looks like he has the man land in his hand as well. Mm-hmm. Hissing Quagmire. Oh, no, it's another oh, Blooming Marsh. Marsh. All the bayous look the same. <laughs> so JD's just all he has is the Wild Slash in his hand? I believe so. And one Phoenix in the yard. I 
kind of land off the top. Yeah, don't so play the land, JD. Don't do it. This is not a good position to be in for JD. A lot of things do it for him, but it's so not four, it. Four or five. Oh, he drew Murder Shrider too. Oh, that's very good. I think we're just passing the turn here. We leave up yeah, Murderous Rider in case something gets You can also leave up your, your, your Tasker activation. Exactly. So if, if – so Tasker, four to eight. So you still have a four to a clock. I think you just let this hit you. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I guess, you know, it looks like Soul is just valuing getting these cards out of his hand while he can cast it. Yeah. Get the hmm. most for it. I just want to really activate a Tasker. Oh, he drew the Unward Ego. He drew the oh, land wow, for the Ego. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That's pretty good. And that searches graveyards too, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think this is going to be pretty clear cut. Yep. Well, we'll see what it does. Ego. Yeah, it does oh, search yeah, graveyard. That. So that's uh, that's excellent. He even has man up if, if JD has Spell Pierce. Mm -hmm. And these lists traditionally don't run too many Crackling Drakes. Being a four drop. Uh, like two generally? Two is the standard list, so... There's not many things at this point that I think JD can actually find. Yeah, Phoenix was the name there. That makes sense. The Look card that the loses you the game. Yes. Take the card you cannot beat. Yes, the people's champion. <laughs> No man land in place. I mean, I guess we're in a position where Soul could rip a, cr a collective brutality and you know Just end this game the next turn. But it, yeah. even if he doesn't, I don't think there's anything yeah, JD can actually do to come bad. back from this. There yeah. we go. An extension yes. of the hand. Yeah, Soul has an island in play. <laughs> That's uh, you know. I don't know if I've ever seen that actually. Of all the no, time, Soul's been may maybe when he's playing extended, but uh, very doubtful.